In this video, we'll talk about social facilitation. Social facilitation is sort of the epitome of social psychology, and we'll talk a little bit about why. Uh, and Triplet is often credited with conducting the first experiment in social psychology in 1897. Triplett was an avid cyclist and observed in just his everyday experiences that cyclists tended to ride faster in the context of a group compared to when they rode alone, even when they were being paced. And this was really an absence of of explicit instruction to compete. So just being in the presence of a group led to faster cycling. And so Triplett wanted to better understand this and brought this phenomenon into the context of the laboratory and had children engage in a similar task, a reeling fishing line, either alone or in pairs and documented that children reeling in pairs reeled faster compared to children that real fishing line alone. And this is very fascinating. Why would our children real fishing line faster in pairs? Why would bicyclists ride faster in groups compared to people completing these tasks alone? And as we'll find, there are a number of competing explanations. And we'll kind of dive into those. But this is a very well-documented phenomenon. Uh, these effects are, are robust and, and very generalizable uh, across different types of tasks and even across species. So there has been a lot of work looking at other species and these social facilitation effects uh, when it comes to eating. So when we say social facilitation effects, we mean that a behavior is enhanced by the presence of a, another person or a number, another member of the species. So people or other animals can complete this task better and faster when there are others present. And so this has been well documented when it comes to eating. So for instance, chickens will eat more grain when they're raised with others or even when they're watching a video of another chicken compared to when they are alone. If you've ever had a single puppy and a litter of puppies, you have definitely observed this phenomenon. If you see a single puppy eating, it's somewhat kind of calm and complacent. If you have a litter of puppies, it is an absolute madhouse, right? Uh, so the idea is that this eating behavior is facilitated by the presence of others. Of course, with our puppies, we could have an explanation of competition, right? If you have a shared food bowl, they are competing for access. Who can get the most food? Uh, but we see this across uh, a wide array of eating patterns. Uh, we see it in humans as well. So if you tend to gain a little bit of weight over the holidays, you may be able to blame not only the high calorie delicious foods, but also your relatives who come to visit and share this meal with you. Uh, they may be facilitating your eating performance. So you're eating more and faster when you eat with others compared to when you eat alone. So this social facilitation phenomenon is well documented, but it's not uh, really well understood why until we see the work of Zions in 1969. Zions argued that since this is such a pervasive phenomenon that we see across a wide variety of tasks and species, that it's likely something very fundamental to our basic nature and that we don't need to call upon competition or particularly an alternative explanation, which was evaluation apprehension. So the idea that we perform better when we know that we're being evaluated, uh, that that wasn't a plausible explanation given how pervasive this phenomenon is. 
right, that it doesn't seem likely that our chickens are worried about being evaluated by other chickens when they're eating, for instance. Uh, and so in order to provide support uh, for his argument, called upon a very unique study design. And Zayat's argument was that the presence of others creates physiological arousal, which then affects performance. And so the mere presence of other people uh, or other members of the species increases physiological arousal, which then impacts performance. And that's not due to competition or evaluation apprehension. This is basic phenomenon of increased physiological arousal in the presence of other members of the species. So to provide support for this, uh, Zion's used a very unique uh, study subject, the cockroach. And these cockroaches were placed into mazes. And so our cockroach would start here in the start box. A floodlight would be turned on and a little gate would open. And our cockroach is, of course, like all evil creatures. Right? Our cockroach is motivated to get to the goal box because it's dark. And like all evil creatures, uh, cockroaches like to cloak themselves in darkness. You have likely witnessed this if you've ever turned on a light in a room and seen a roach uh, scurrying to get to a dark corner. So uh, the floodlight is turned on, the gate is lifted, the cockroach runs to the goal box where it's dark, right? So that's kind of the, the basic premise. So I'll walk you through the two different conditions in my graphics. I will tell you, uh, I do not have a graphic of a cockroach because I am terrified of roaches. And so instead, we have a little ladybug because they are cuter and much less scary. So, all right, our two conditions vary the nature of these plexiglass audience boxes. So as you see, we have plexiglass boxes that are separated from the runway of the maze. So in the alone condition, we have our cockroach, or here our ladybug, that's placed in the start box. The floodlight is turned on, the gate is lifted, these plexiglass audience boxes are empty. And Zionth measures the time it takes for the roach to run down the maze and get to the goal box. This is compared to the audience condition in which these plexiglass boxes are filled with a little cockroach audience. So they're filled with cockroaches here, but again, they are not competing to get to the goal box because they're separated from the runway maze, but they are present. Right? So again, the physical presence of other members of the species. And what Zion's found was just as you saw, our cockroach ran faster. It took it less time to get to the goal box when there were other cockroaches present in these little audience boxes. And so this seems to support uh, Zion's argument that it is a kind of basic physiological response, likely physiological arousal, that leads to this facilitation effect. Because again, our roaches weren't competing to get to the goal box, and it seems highly unlikely that such a simple creature like a cockroach would have evaluation apprehension. Right? We wouldn't think that they would have uh, the kind of cognition that, oh, you know, I have all of my friends watching me. I better run really fast or they may think poorly of me. That seems unlikely. And so instead, uh, it's likely physiological arousal that leads to the facilitated or enhanced performance. So I also argued that arousal increased dominant responding. Uh, and this was an explanation of some contradictory findings. So many researchers were finding these classic facilitation effects, but some are finding that the presence of other people uh, was inhibiting responding, was inhibiting performance. So people were doing worse 
when other people were present compared to when they were completing the task alone. So the exact opposite findings. Uh, and as researchers began to kind of delve into these inconsistencies, it became apparent that what was different was the nature of the task. So researchers were finding these classic facilitation effects for very easy tasks, uh, very well rehearsed or well learned tasks like eating or running in a straight line when that is the only option. But they were finding these social inhibition effects. The presence of others was disrupting performance when the task was very difficult uh, or not well learned. And so Zions argued that this arousal led to dominant responding, which was likely to be the correct response. The dominant response is correct when it comes to easy tasks, but it's likely to be incorrect when it comes to difficult tasks. And we've maybe all experienced this. A little bit of arousal leads to excitement and good performance for something that is easy, but can easily disrupt performance if we're doing something that is highly complex or difficult. And so again, uh, Zions was able to demonstrate this with his roach subjects. And with roaches being kind of simple creatures, it's easy to devise a difficult or complex task for a roach. So our simple maze was running straight, and that's the only option. The difficult or complex task for our roaches was making a right hand turn when there are multiple options. So our roach could run straight, it could make a left hand turn, it needs to make a right hand turn. So let's look at performance in our complex maze. We know what happens with the simple maze. What happens with our complex maze? Again, I have ladybugs. So our ladybug in the alone condition, these audience boxes are empty. You see pretty fast performance in which the ladybug uh, gets to the goal box. But if we compare that to the audience condition, in which the audience boxes are filled with other cockroaches or here other ladybugs, we see that performance is slowed. It takes the ladybug longer to get to the goal box and there may be more mistakes. So you saw here our ladybug made the wrong turn, a left hand rather than a right hand turn. And so the presence of other members of the species disrupted performance for this complex task. So again, uh, Zionist's argument is that the presence of other members of the species leads to this physiological arousal, which increases the dominant response. And that dominant response is likely to be the correct response and lead to enhancement or facilitation in easy tasks, but it's likely to be the incorrect response leading to impairment or disruption when it comes to difficult tasks. So an audience will have, uh, or the presence of other people will have different effects depending upon the difficulty of the task or how well learned or well rehearsed the task is. This can explain uh, the different effects of an audience for experts versus for a novice. So there's sometimes a home field or home court advantage that having a lot of your fans there to cheer you on really helps the performance of professional athletes. But if you're just starting out learning how to play a new sport, uh, then having a lot of people there to observe you uh, may disrupt or impair your performance. Uh, and research in a laboratory have, has demonstrated this as well, that the presence of other people here in audience seem to disrupt performance for an unlearned task, but after people had practiced and rehearsed this task and it was well learned, it facilitated performance. Uh, so performance was higher when an audience was there compared to alone. The opposite was true when they were just starting out.